this is the fourth year eight game design lesson. Now what I want us to do today is I want us to understand how we can use if statements and broadcast scripts to program levels in a computer game or in our computer game. So what I want is for our, our game that we've sort of made so far, which is half completed, um, so that we can actually have a player that progresses onto another level. So programming levels in Scratch. So at the moment we've got a one level game where you move characters around um, and you can shoot baddies um, until you get to the um, end of the level. So what we then want to happen is we want it so that once we've, uh, let's say, killed all the baddies, that perhaps a, a door will appear or a key will appear, which is like your end of level item. You collect that item or you go through the door and then it should disappear and then you get the next level to load. How can we do this? Well, first of all, remember that a different level is just a different background in Scratch. So we would need to create a new backdrop. We'd need to draw our backdrop and um, we'd then have two backdrops. So we'd have backdrop one and backdrop two. That would be level one and level two. Then what we need to do is to create this end of level scoring item. So we'd first of all need to create a brand new sprite. We'd need to choose our sprite. So it could be a door or it could be a key. And we select uh, that particular sprite. And then we need to program the key or the door or whatever the end of level item is that you want. You would need to program it so that it's hidden to begin with. But then when the score reaches a certain number, in this case we've got 10, but it might be different for our for your game. We then make that end of level item appear. So after we click the green flag, we make that item hide. But then whenever the score reaches a certain number, we make it show. And then we need to program it a little bit more. So another script in this particular sprite. We need to program it so that it's constantly being checked to see if it is touched by the main character. And once it is touched by the main character, we want the score to go up by one. We want it to hide as well. And we want it to uh, broadcast a message so that the stage knows that it's ready to, uh, to change the backdrop. Now the broadcast script, just to remind you from year seven that you can think of the broadcast script as a, a kind of person inside the program. And a broadcast is literally that. The person is, is broadcasting a message to the rest of the program, shouting one out. And then if another script, um, which we want to run um, during uh, when that broadcast happens, um, if we use the when I receive hat and put it on top of that particular script, we can make that script run at that moment in time. So in this case, in the stage, we have a when I receive level two um, broadcast hat we then switch backdrop to backdrop two. So this will mean that it's not run at the start of the game, that script, but it only actually comes active when that broadcast is made. So then what we need to do is program the, uh, the, the stage so that it will actually respond um, accordingly. So we can say that when we click the green flag, we switch to backdrop one, so that's our first level. And then when we uh, receive level two broadcast, then we switch the backdrop to level two. So it changes the background at the right time. So we create our background. We create our end of level item. We program our end of level item to be hidden until a certain score occurs, which would signal the end of the level. We then program our end of level item a little bit more so that it interacts with the cat or the, the main character. Um, so that it can hide, so that the score can go up by one, and that we can broadcast the message. And then in our stage, we can have it so that the backdrop changes when that message is received, when that broadcast message is received. So let's have a look to see how we can program that in our game. So here's our game from last lesson. And you can see that I've got some baddies that um, are uh, moving around. And if I um, go up, and try and shoot a baddie, it disappears and I get a score. Now, you might be thinking, well, they're all going in the same direction. That is true. What we could do, I suppose, is we could very quickly add in um, a little bit of a, um, a weight uh, so that on a particular, um, on these particular different baddies, that they all just have slightly different timings. 
let's say that this one weights 0 0.5, not 0 0.05, there we go. So if I click the green flag now, they're all in the same direction, but they're all sort of turning at different times. So you've got slightly different uh, timings there. They look a little bit different. Okay, so on to the main uh, part of this lesson. So we're saying that a different level is a different um, background. So I'm going to go to my stage, I'm going to go to backdrops, and you can see here that I've got backdrop, well it's called backdrop 2 strangely enough, let's just call that backdrop 1. Now um, let's create a backdrop for level 2, so I'm going to go to paint, this one is going to be called backdrop 2 so that's fine, I'm going to have um, black um, platforms again and now the reason that it's important to keep it consistent is that we've already programmed in level one that gravity works on a black um, object so when it's touching black it won't fall if it's not touching black it will fall so we need to make sure that we're consistent with our platforms so let's just draw in a few um, platforms for level two uh, let's do a few little stepping stones here there we go so this is going to be my backdrop for level two and that is fine so I've definitely got my first backdrop for level one and my second backdrop for level two now the next thing I want to do is to create this end of level item so let's choose to draw a door now what color is a door let's make our door a, a brownie color so let's go over to sort of the oranges and let's change the brightness down so we've got a brown color and let's draw a little door like so let's center it and let's draw a little door handle like so okay now um, let's position that over here so that's going to be up in the top right hand corner and let's now start programming it now what I want is for this door to be hidden at the start of the game so let's make sure that it is hidden and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, uh, a condition where it will appear when the score reaches a certain number. Now I've got three baddies here, so it would make sense for it to be when the score is three. So let's use this operator, and let's say that when the score is equal to three, that I want this door to then show. So let's see if this works. Click the green flag. I am going around here. I am shooting the baddies. And then you can see that the door appears when the score is three. So, so far, so good. Now, the next thing I want to do is to program this door a little bit more, like I said in the PowerPoint. So I'm going to say that when I click the green flag, I'm going to make the door constantly check if it's been touched by the cat. Now, if, now the cat sprite one, so if it is ever touched by the cat, then what I want to happen is I want the door to hide and I want the score to go up by one and it's really important that we have this script in You're probably thinking well, well I, don't, I don't want um, a point for going through the door well we kind of need to in the way that we set this up because we've got a script here that says when the score is three make the door show if I then say when it's the doors touched by the cat make the door hide if I don't have this script in then it's going to constantly try and make the door reappear because the score continues to be three. So if I was to shoot this or these items like so, let's just very quickly do that. Now, if I try and go through the door, okay, the door keeps reappearing, okay, because there's a conflict with those particular um, scripts that I've just done. One's trying to hide. Um, when it's touched by the cat and the other one's trying to show when the score is three. So I need to make sure that I add that score uh, by one. 
Now the next thing that I need to ensure so that I can actually get the stage to move on to another backdrop is I need to have a broadcast. So I'm going to add in this broadcast. I'm going to create a new message. The message is going to be level two. So what I've got now, let's get the cat starting down here. Everything is now primed. I can shoot that item. I can shoot that baddie. I can shoot that baddie. I can go through the door. Score goes up by four. And I am broadcasting that message or the door is broadcasting that message. But nothing's happening in the background. And that's because I need to have one last little script over here. So I'm going to go to the stage. When I start the game, I of course want to go to backdrop one. But when the stage receives level two, I'm going to get it to switch to backdrop two. Let's see if this now will change the level at the right time. So the door appears and you can see here that I'm going through. Now, if you ever have this issue, that is simply because the color that I've chosen for those platforms isn't exactly the same as the color that I've chosen in stage in the first backdrop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just see if I can alter that slightly. I'm going to pick out this color here. I'm going to go to backdrop one and I'm going to try and fill it so it's exactly the same and of course I need to make sure that this is picking up the correct shade of black so now when I click the green flag I'm on level one I definitely can't go through those platforms. I can shoot these items here. I can go through the door. And again, you can see that this is absolutely fine. I am not going through the platforms unless, of course, I'm not touching, uh, I'm not going through the platforms because they're the same color, but I do still fall when I'm not on a platform. So that's how you can create a second level. Now, some of you might be thinking, great, but I've got no baddies here. Well, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to create brand new baddies for these uh, for this particular level. Uh, but the difference here is, let's just make them look a little bit different so that you can definitely see uh, what they are. Now, the difference here is that you want these particular baddies, yes, to glide from one location to the other like you saw earlier, that's fine, or in a previous lesson. However, what you've got to make sure that you do is you make sure that these particular baddies are hidden at the start of the game. And only when that level two broadcast occurs are they shown. You can program them exactly the same as before so they hide when they're touched by the bullet but you must make sure that they are hidden to start with and then they only show when that broadcast for level two occurs so have a little go at seeing if you can program a second level in your game